Thanks for watching this clip from my new podcast, In Search of Soil. For more great clips and full episodes, check out the links in the description below. Is above ground and below ground decomposition of carbon equal? So above ground, like the dry biomass, most of that just goes away into the sky uh, when it breaks down. When you go underground, if you look at the dry biomass of the roots, does that break down and volatilize as much as above ground? Because what I'm getting at, would you rather be putting 100 units on soil surface or 100 units below soil surface if you want to keep as much carbon in the soil? Very, very good question. If you put it on the surface, it won't decompose as fast. So that carbon stays there. It can be being blown out you know, with wind and everything. But if, it's, if it stays, Argentina is a perfect example. You go to a field in Argentina and you are walking on a mattress of residues. You don't see the soil. I mean, there is this much amount of beautiful, small, finely broken soybean and corn stalks residues. That's the true carbon that we are not putting in the atmosphere. That stays there for, for a long time. What happens eventually, if you, you don't want it to be lost, if it's lost, it just goes to another place. So to answer your question, you very, very correctly pointed out, what happens if you put it in the soil? You bring the organic matter in the soil higher, you add in carbon, but there is a fraction of that that's lost to CO2. So it's a balance. If you keep it on the surface, it doesn't get decomposed. That's, that's pure carbon. 40 to 50 percent roughly of that amount of biomass is carbon stored there. You put it in there, 60 percent of that goes to CO2. So 40 percent stays in the soil. In the soil, yeah. So, but up there, it's nearly 100 percent because there are no microbes. Slowly, yeah, microbes will. So, the, the, there is normally this is actually even we do it in, in, the, in, the, in the model. That, that top mulch works its way through, and that's why the top soil always has higher organic matter, and this residue never really reach you know, much deeper, uh, except for the rooting system, that over time, if they are um, well-grown and, and established, you can have root system in, in corn going down uh, you know, three feet, four feet, uh, down alpha alpha is nearly you know five meters and so um that that i don't know if that explains so if you no, leave it, it there does. And, it, and thinking of that thick mat like one thing i always think is, is like when you put roots in the soil you're building soil down like because the roots are pushing down where you can't go if you're if you're putting organic matter on top as a mulch you're building soil up because eventually that mulch layer like the soil level rises up correct yeah you building soils, you build, yeah, you making a step that is free over time that you slowly, it takes very little to, to lose soil and it takes hundreds of years to build soils. How do you build soils? With exactly the way you said, you're basically building this that eventually, this, you seen things decompose, you put a seed, that will grow, right? That's new sorts of, because then it gets mixed in and it slowly improves. If you put it there, it's not that you never want to put it in there because roots are there and you want to keep them there and so on, but some gets decomposed. Now it's it's a met, it's a rate, it's a balance how fast you put it out versus how fast you you draw your but you know your bank account. So the roots get decomposed, but you next year you put more residues and the roots and the yield is getting bigger, those three tons, but you put four, you accumulated one. So the prevention, the CO2. Is unpreventable. It's, it's part of the decomposition. Now, but there are thresholds. There's complexity. It's not always, if it is cold, what happens? Nothing happens. It means the soil's carbon stays like that, it stays like the surface. If it is too wet, also, it can kind of becomes, you know, it gets D D95, but there is conditions not good. Best example I can do, tropical soils, desert. How much carbon is in those soils? Man, they got rain. They got plenty of vegetation, right? In tropic, tropic conditions. Why there's no carbon? There's, there's no carbon. 
0.5, less. Acting ex expedite because of the temperature. So the, the temperature plays a big role and soil water content plays a big role. And there is an optimum of mineralization, of decompositions of this. So cold conditions, the prairie, the Midwest, and uh, Illinois soils of, you know, four, five percent, three, three, four percent, because they, they were at 5.5 and they lost it once they till. They try. So cold is good, keeps, preserves you, everything is good. Hot turns things down. And so that's also with water content. And so we have functions. Another thing is percent of clay. Percent of clay, clay plays a, a protection factor. So basically, the, the, by the, the, the biogeochemistry, carbon is tied to it, and it's much more um, difficult to decompose on a clay particle. Sandy soils, how much carbon is in sandy soil? Significantly lower than clay, because in clay it's protected. We have done soil biology 101, maybe 201, you know. Thanks for watching this clip from my new podcast, In Search of Soil. For more great clips and full episodes, check out the links in the description below.